Ever found yourself in situations where your workouts feel phenomenal, you feel the pump, but at other times you feel like you literally did nothing. And to make matters worse, that's confirmed by the none to extremely slow progress in as far as muscle growth is concerned. Well, there's a reason for that. And let's cover how to fix that today so that your workouts guarantee muscle growth, at least from a scientific standpoint. Well, firstly, let's quickly understand what makes your muscles grow from your workouts. So well, if you look at this graph, the positive y-axis represents muscle growth and adaptation, whereas the negative y-axis represents muscle weakness, damage, and recovery. Now, when you go into a workout, you put your muscles under damage that temporarily weakens your muscles. And at this point, after a couple of days, they recover and come back bigger and ready to take on the next workout session. Now, applying training intensity that's higher than the previous workout will challenge your muscles to grow even further and this continuous cycle results in muscle growth over time. But it's not as simple as it sounds practically. You might find that there are so many things that you overlook time and time again which leave you heartbroken every time you look at the size of your arms. And the first one we'll look at is lifting heavier. Now you've heard this before multiple times even from me that applying more weight to your training over time gradually will lead to muscle growth, which is true because as we said earlier, adding more weight is one of the methods you can use to further introduce a higher stimulus onto your muscle fibers. And even if you claim that you bought this covered, well, you need to make sure because you might find that you'll be lifting an extra 20 pounds the following week, but your form sucks. You don't want to be that guy at the gym that admires other guys curling like 60 kilos on an EZ bar, only to find that they're just swinging the weight up and down. Because trying to build muscle by lifting heavier with a broken form is the same as trying to mop the floors of a building that's about to be demolished. That's just completely pointless. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some studies that have proven time and time again that muscle soreness or the pump have been found to be closely correlated to muscle growth. But the problem now is when you start prioritizing muscle soreness and the pump as a sole indicator of muscle growth instead of using the workout session itself as an indicator. Now, here's what I mean. Whiteboard. Now, there are three mechanisms in training. You have the metabolic stress, you have the muscle damage, and you have the mechanical tension. Now, muscle damage represents the obvious micro trauma caused onto your muscles, which leads to inflammatory response to your body, which theoretically signals more muscle growth, right? And because of this, as we said earlier, people tend to think more muscle soreness, more growth. While the metabolic stress is all about the buildup of chemical byproducts within your muscles due to a certain way of training. And over time, the more you continue, the more your muscles become acidic, the more you feel the burn and obviously the more theoretically the muscle growth. And lastly of the mechanical tension. Now, this simply refers to the tension that's placed onto your muscle fibers due to a specific load as your muscles contract and lengthen under that specific load. And in this case, the heavier the weight and bigger the range of motion, the bigger the stretch, thus the more the muscle growth. Okay, so why mention all of those mechanics? Like why care about them? Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. Studies on muscle damage, particularly a 2017 review, showed that subjects had a bigger muscle size due to the immediate swelling of the muscle itself caused by muscle damage that later died down after a certain time after the workout. Well, take a look at this graph. As you can clearly see, the higher the muscle damage, the lower the muscle growth. It wasn't until the muscle damage actually started to die down, that's when the muscle growth actually started to gain momentum. So looking at this graph, you can clearly see that chasing more muscle damage does not mean more muscle growth. Well, what about the pump? Looking at metabolic stress, well, first of all, in order to induce this type of mechanism, you need to train with lower rest periods within your sets. And this ultimately will lead to having that burn within your workout on the target muscle. But this had no effect. And as far as muscle growth is concerned, as compared to when resting longer in between your workouts and again reaching failure within your training which is another factor that 
triggers metabolic stress and the same effect as when you would leave a couple of reps shy of failure. And as far as muscle growth is concerned, what about mechanical tension? Well, research has proven time and time again that mechanical tension is actually the driving force when it comes to muscle growth. And although it does exist in other mechanisms, at least to some degree, Structuring your workouts in such a way that actually incorporates a lot more mechanical tension will actually guarantee muscle growth. Now, getting to the practical side of things, how do you actually do this? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you actually maintain the same program while gradually adding more weight to your training without compromising your form. And you might notice the feeling of soreness gradually declining as you get stronger, which is good because that means that your body will now spend less time trying to repair damaged muscle and focus more on building new muscle. Number two, you need to make sure that you rest long enough in between your sets. Well, this is a 2016 study by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, which actually tested the effects of resting between three minutes and one minute in between your sets. And the outcome clearly favored longer rest periods for muscle growth. So keeping your rest period around three minutes for heavier, more compound lifts is optimal, assuming that the intensity of the lift itself is intense and 90 to two minutes for other lifts. Now lastly, applying proper range of motion. Now remember, in order for us to maximize mechanical tension, we need to keep the load on a fully stretched muscle and prioritizing a deep stretch onto your muscles as much as possible during a lift will ensure the recruitment of as much muscle fibers as possible. So instead of just cutting the movement just so you can ego lift the weight up and down, keep your focus on the stretch and ensure that there's a lot of mind-muscle connection. You need to understand that the principle of muscle adaptation or muscle growth is actually applying a higher level of stimulus on the next workout than the previous workout. And because of this, you need to keep track of your weights, your reps, your sets during your workout and avoid guesswork. You don't just want to feel the progress, you want to see it. Tip number four, avoiding too much volume. Well, ever heard of junk volume? It's as real as it gets. A volume training study compared training 10 sets, 10 reps over the course of 12 weeks and training five sets for 10 reps over the course of 12 weeks. And the results actually found that training 10 sets had no more effect than actually training five sets. Does that mean you should just train only five sets? Well, absolutely not. The study mainly highlights that there is a certain limit in as far as the effective sets that you can incorporate within your training. And looking at this graph, this is a typical range that you want to maintain because anything beyond this point is just volume that will not add any significance. Apply all these tips and be guaranteed to see muscle growth within your training. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any questions that you might have in the comment section down below. I'll see you on the next video.